and we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been 15 years in the making. Years of arguing over the king of the hill, replete with excuses, hollow trash talk, and speculation. No more. Dark Age of Camelot will have its first champion. First group to be able to claim, without a shadow of a doubt, its top place atop the pantheon of MMO gaming. 12 teams, 30 plus matches, players from all over the world, and only one team will be left standing. Welcome to the first, the inaugural, the widely anticipated Dark Age of Camelot 5v5 tournament. Let's take a minute and introduce our commentary team. Joining me today, we have Wes, a.k.a. Spaghetti Johnson, a.k.a. Sin Dizzle, a.k.a. What, what else do you call yourself, Wes? Uh, West with a T, because I'm from the West, West Coast. With a t <laughs> okay. Well, welcome to the commentary. Um, I I'm really excited to do this today, and uh, of course, we're also joined by the uh, one of the mainstays of the Dark Age of Camelot community, all the way from uh, I think a, a coffee shop just outside of the Blarney Stone in, in Dublin. We have uh, Babin. Welcome to the uh, to the broadcast as well, Babe. How are you this morning, or uh, I guess thanks. evening for you? Evening. Yeah, I'm great. Thanks. This this is. I'm really excited. Let's go. And of course, we're also joined by um, the two folks who have who have done a lot of the work behind the scenes to make this all happen, um, Obelisk and, and Cooge. So, uh, welcome, guys, and, and thanks for taking a few minutes before the tournament to, to chat with us. Thanks, bud. Thanks for uh, thank you, us Joel. The comments here. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Off to a good start so far. So let's Pumping let's me up. Let's, uh, let's let's get a few questions going and, and talk a little bit about this tournament. Um, this game's been around for a long time. And the competitive scene has been largely user controlled, both you know in in rules and format. What what prompted you guys to organize an event like this? Well, um, you know the night program has been undergoing some changes lately. We're kind of getting more involved with the community, um, especially with events and things like that. So, <clears throat> you know, we decided that this would be a great first event for us. Um, we have a little bit of experience organizing group events um, outside of an official setting um, with the. AVA draft, which you were you know, a part of organizing in Kuchos as well. So we kind of built on that and decided to go with the 5v5 tournament. And hopefully it's a success. We have a decent amount of groups. Um, should be pretty easy to manage and should provide a decent amount of fights. And hopefully it'll be very fun for all the participants and the viewers at home. What, uh, what made you choose 5v5 versus any other number? I mean, groups go up to 8, obviously. Yeah, well, um, you know, it's sometimes hard to get you know a group of eight friends or seven other friends together um five is a more manageable number i think and also the fights are you know relatively balanced sometimes when you go into like 2v2s 3v3s setups really prevail at that point but i think 5v5 gives you a little more room to play around with setups um it's not too hard to get four other friends involved and it's just i, I think it's a good number um for now in the future you know we are very open to doing um you know variety of number of um, you know, groups numbers so you know maybe an AV8 tournament um, there's some talk about people wanting to go 1v1 tournament maybe a 2v2 to 3v3 tournament whatever there's a demand for you know we'll definitely look at um, we're not opposed to anything we just decided to start with five because it kind of made sense for us right and what's um obviously broadsword's been very helpful for you guys in this um, what, what's been going on behind the scenes to make this happen because I, I think a lot of people would gain more of an appreciation of this if, if you could give us a little bit of a process kind of story, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, it all kind of started with um, Beaven coming to me and Kuji asking us if we wanted to do a, a tournament like this, and we were definitely interested. Um, we kind of got together, did a lot of brainstorming initially about, you know, how the tournament needs to go, ideas for the tournament. Um, you know, we came up with, you know, it definitely needs to be more of a rule set. I think that will excite a lot of players. It's something that people haven't done in a while, and it brings a, a big, you know, kind of spices things up, setup-wise and whatnot. So we kind of started just brainstorming ideas. Um, you know, how would it be balanced? Things like that. Looked into the the big issue was, you know, getting everyone signed up, and we found a great site, Chalonge.com, which you know all the participants signed up in. That really helped. And then once Kuj and I kind of did our brainstorming, we kind of, you know, gave uh, John and Beaven pretty much a big proposal and we went back and forth you know did some red line changes you know back and forth between us and them about what's possible what's doable where there are thoughts and ideas um, and once we got that ironed out it just was a matter of implementing it all um, get everything set up <clears throat> getting the uh, you know, the word out um, setting up the challenge site setting up the areas to fight in um, 
And yeah, no, it was, you know, it's a bit of work behind it, but, you know, we're definitely excited that it's done and that, you know, hopefully we get to see a great finished product today. Yeah, and it's 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 really impressive that you guys were able to do this, especially since um, you know, this is largely volunteer for you guys, which, which I think is really awesome. Um, so, so tell us a little bit about competitive Dark Age. What about, you know, this game's combat system lends it to, to events like this? What, I'll let Cooch take that one. He's more competitive, I think, than I am at this game. <laughs> uh, it's just, <laughs> it's just a great kind of game mechanically for PvP. Uh, a lot of things just make it shine above other games. Things, simple things that everybody loves, like side styles, side back stunts, things like that. It's just nice. the cohesion with your group members, caster synergy. Uh, it's just a really nice game for competitive uh, fighting. I think if this game was released a little later, it might have been something bigger. But it was released really early and. A lot of stuff wasn't around yet. Yeah, that's that's very true, and and it certainly has gone through so many changes in in how groups are composed, how how fights are are kind of conceived, both tactically and conceptually. Um, you, you know, what specifically about the combat system in Dark Age distinguishes it from other um, MMO games? Uh, I would. Say it's just a lot more. Uh, it's a lot more precise and slow. Uh, when you play other MMOs, PvP, it's quick action, quick thinking. This time, this kind of game, you have more time to think on your decisions, and they make kind of a bigger impact. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little, it's slower and more precise, I would say. Yeah, and it, I think there's a team element maybe that that doesn't exist in other MMOs much, and and that that synergy really has to be there. Um, so, how do you design a team for an event like this? Like, what what factors are the group leaders taking into account when they're choosing their class composition? You really want a class with a lot of ability. So utility, utility, utility. You want a class that can do a lot of things no matter what kind of situation it's in. So and that, that's really bad for a lot of classes that are kind of specialized in their role, whether it be for a solo role or a group role. They have a specialized job. It weakens them here because there's only five spots in your group. So you really want classes that can do a lot of things, like a Valkyrie or Bard, things like that. And so, what what are we likely to see from a lot of the groups? You know, what what kind of classes are going to be uh, kind of mainstays? What classes are going to shine, and, and and what won't we see? I'm sure I think you'll we're see going a to see a lot of bar. A lot of bar. Yeah, yeah I, I think um, you know, a lot of people, from what I've seen, are pretty excited about Thurgis. Um I don't know how they'll actually work out in the long run. I think you'll see a lot of you know utility classes like Kuji was saying, classes that can do multiple things. Um, Spirit Masters have demos, a lot of damage, and stat debuffs, and also a pet. They bring you know quite a lot to a group. Um, and on, on the tank side, you know you get classes like Kuji said, Valkyries are great. You know they're great pushers. Um, they can heal. They can interrupt very well, and they can also damage. Classes like Mauler's are very hard to CC. They can also make them very hard to kill. And they also do a lot of damage and provide some you know CC with their roots and whatnot. So I think you'll see you know classes like that kind of shine. Um, whether they'll be very popular or just run in specialized setups, that's another question. Uh, what do you think, Kuj? I know you have a group in this. Where are you guys running? Well, I think I think classes either tanks or casters. There's a lot of room for utility classes like Minalist is a great caster class. Sorcerer mm -hmm. and Spirit Masters. Those three casters, tons of utility. You can make stuff work. I think specialized classes take a hit here, honestly. At first, uh, I thought Thurgis would be really good, but they're so focused in their job that kind of defeats the purpose of what you need out of a five-man. I'm not sure if they're going to work, but I could be proven wrong. We'll see. Do you think tactically in 5v5 that uh, the fights have a, you have a lower margin for error than you would if you were, say, doing larger groups, either you know, 8v8 or even you know, multiple groups versus multiple groups? Is there, is there more of a margin for error or less of a margin of error? That's what I'm trying to ask. You know, I believe so. And when you look at just like numbers, um, one person is 20% of the team instead of 88 where you're like, you know, a little over 10%. So, you know, if you mess up, then that's a bigger part of their team messing up. So you got to really, you know, stay on your toes, I think. I think, um, you know, you'll see some mistakes made and I think those will cost some teams in the long run. Uh, just because one person messing up, you know, if one person gets out of the fight, that's 20% of the team gone. Yeah, it's definitely a bigger deal. Um, in, eight, in eight group or even more, you, there's a lot of room for other people to cover up someone else's slack. When you get smaller and smaller, it's more down to each individual. Um, there's a big part of team play and cohesion as well. 
I mean, and setup always makes a factor. So there's a lot of things going into these these fights that determine that'll determine the outcome. A lot of groups are, are going to have a temptation to to use abilities to secure a very quick kill. For example, they'll you know they'll burn a bunch of stuff on, or use a bunch of abilities on ink incoming to to get a quick kill. Do you think that that's a an effective tactic for five v five? Do you think that that will be something we'll see a lot of? I'm sure we we'll, we might see a couple of people go for the blitz. Um, it's up to the other group to handle. Um, it's hard to say if it'll be successful or not. Yeah, I, I agree. There, it's you know you never know how someone's gonna play. Even you know on live and some AV8 groups, you get people that just like to blow everything as soon as possible. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it gets them killed. How important is is using abilities correctly going to be? I mean, there's an impulse to use stuff in, in almost knee-jerk fashion, but of course, in this kind of setting, you'll be trying to bait that out of the other group. So how, how important is using abilities correctly going to be? It's it's going to be a huge deal. You know, things like mocks and purges are going to be up there, the most probably most used RAs anyway, and using those at the right time could definitely determine the outcome of a fight. So I think it's going to be very important. There are a way to counter these abilities, but they're still important regardless. Absolutely, that's a that's a great point. Um, what are what what are you hoping that like, what are, what are the goals? Of this? Like, what are we hoping that at the end of this tournament that that we've accomplished? I hope that the competitive scene in Dark Age just just increases. Whether it's for any type of play style, um, I want people to to want to fight and want to keep fighting each other. Um, hopefully this gets so popular we can do more events like Obi's mentioned, we can do 1v1, 2v2, whatever. Um, so the goal is, this is just the start, the goal is to hopefully make this a big regular thing eventually for me. And then of, of course for everybody to have a bit of fun as well. And um, tell me a little bit about the prizes that are, that are being offered. I think a, lot, a few people are unsure about that. Okay, yeah, we... Um... You know, we went back and forth with Broadsword to see what was available you know, to give out as prizes. Um, we had to make some compromises, but I think the prize list is you know, pretty decent, um, especially for a, a tournament like this where you know, we've had some criticism that this doesn't include all playstyles, but it includes the competitive playstyle. But you know, we couldn't make the, the prizes too crazy. So we went with you know, time cards for essentially all three um, places, first, third, or first, second, and third. And we also went um, for the first place we're letting them reskin one weapon. Um, so, say you have a um, Dark Knight's Flame on your Paladin, you can, if you win the tournament, you can have that changed into maybe the Savage Two-Hand Sword, which, look, which looks pretty cool. Stuff like that. Um, but just one weapon per person on the on their account. Um, we're also doing a look-alike NPC, with you know obviously the the name. If I win, the NPC will be named Oblo. So I think that's pretty cool as well. Um, you're kind of immortalized in the game as a champion of a tournament. I think that's the big one. That's the one I'd, I'd most want, I think, rather than the, the weapon reskin. And so will, after will that, that statue... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, the statue, we're not sure exactly where that's going to be yet. Um, it's kind of down to the developers. I was hoping it would be somewhere in RVR, possibly like on Agrimon, like maybe put like some sort of statue or NPC there, just so you know, you're in the middle of you know the realms, essentially, and you have a statue there. Um, however, that may not be the case. We'll have to see. They may be in the capital cities, um, but you know we'll have to just just see what they think on that once we get there. And of course, and, the bragging uh, rights that can't be quantified. Yeah, the bragging rights. Are... Of course. Yeah. So, what do you anticipate that the winning team is gonna is gonna be able to lord over their everybody else for the next month or so until the next tournament comes in? What what do you think they're gonna be like to be around in the community? Um, insufferable terrible <laughs> no. No. um i mean a, a champion for anything is great you know you had the last event where you had the um the highest rps earned the highest irs and you know those players were given statues in the capital cities and uh, it's just great for the community I, I think you know you get to see someone that put in the time and the effort as a, a great player that won you know the event and got the tournament i think it's it's great to look at you know the champions that play this game i think celebrating greatness is, is a good thing um, whether their attitude changes or not, you know, it doesn't really matter. But you know, some people are uh, cocky to begin with, anyway. <laughs> Very true. Um, we talked a little earlier. Such a. 
I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which team would be cocky if they weren't. I, I think that you know this these pizza party guys. They're they're quite humble, and I would expect <laughs> a, a degree of humility from them if they won. Um, but we'll see, I guess. And, I mean, it, it, you have to win first, and and uh, um, I, I'm just hoping that everybody kind of keeps it keeps it adult, you know, when they win. I'm sure they won't, but <laughs> it depends on who wins. It depends on uh, what, what type of player wins, what type of person. Well, let's let's hope for the humble folks to win it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you talked a little earlier about other ev other events that you'd be doing, um, and of huh? course, two v two, three v three, etc. Any other type of event that's maybe not team ver team versus team, and not maybe not even solo, but you know, some sort of capture the flag or scavenger hunt kind of arrangement that, where there could be prizes. Uh, has anything like that been that's a little bit more accessible to everybody? Has anything like that been discussed? Yeah, um, I mean. There are multiple events. There's multiple types of nights. Um, you know, Kuji and I focus more on the RVR and the, I guess, more competitive aspect of it. But you know, some nights that are more, you know, relaxed about stuff like that. You know, they'll definitely throw events and hopefully have some, some great stuff like that. Like you know, Saxona probably would love to do something like that. I'd imagine it'd be right up his alley. I think. Yeah, we're also happy to be a part of it. Um, there's been, there's always talks of things. Me and Obi always talk about new events, next things. There's talk of Zerg events and everything. So, I mean, there's definitely potential for anything you could think of. Um, it's just a matter of time, resources, and who's available to help get it rolling. So I wouldn't put anything out of the question. We just favor this event. This is what we like to do, and we're very competitive. So this is what we started with. Nice. That's that's great. Um, and has Broad Broadsword indicated that they're willing to be a part of those events in the future and provide you guys with the, the back-end resources and help that you need for, for future stuff? Yeah, definitely, of course. Um, they're definitely open and pushing for night events and things like that. So I, I think they're open um, to hearing what we have they're to very say and what we want to do. And they're nice to work with. Um, they pretty much, I mean, they're very flexible and they really let's kind of do what we want. So it's it's been it's been a blast. It's great. I mean, it's it's invaluable, obviously, that they that they help you because, um, I mean, as we saw with the draft, having to do all the back end stuff and dealing with the logistical frustrations that w that were involved, um, having that official support, I, I think, makes things a little smoother and decreases the the stress on people organizing it. I'm sure. Yeah, it, it does, but also it, it applies some pressure as well because it's an official event. You want to make sure it's not done, you know, half heartedly. You want to make sure everything's great. Um, especially when you're putting Broadsword's name on something. It's not just a community-run, player-run event. It's a, it's a more official level. So it adds a little bit of stress and, stress and pressure. But, you know, it, it's great to do something um, that's official and, it's, you know, more polished. And like with this What's one, um, this is our first event. So, we're, we're, you know, we're kind of learning as we go here. So we don't anticipate everything to run absolutely perfectly, but, you know, we're kind of learning a lot from this. So we do also ask that the players and participants bear with us while we kind of work out the kinks with this, because, like I said, this is, this is new for all of us in an official tournament setting. But, you know, we'll learn from this, and hopefully in the future everything will run perfectly. Right. What... um. What prompted you guys to choose the Mordred rule set for this, uh, in, rather than realm, um, realm specific? Mainly balance, because yeah, I... for competitiveness, there's there's pretty heavy uh, realm imbalance issues when you're talking about competitive fight, and even even more so when you drop it down to five v five. Just certain realms and certain classes are going to shine more than other realms, just to how classes are and groups are. So there there is really no other option. Plus, it gives pe players more ways to experiment with their group. Uh, leaving the game open to any class that you want to run. Uh, it's just more fun for everybody, I think. Right. So, and, and of course, with anything like this, there's going to be some, some intrigue and some politicking and, and ultimately some hurt feelings in who gets to be on which group. Um, what what was that like, that process? If, maybe just speak for everybody as to how groups were formed and, and people were recruited and, and people switched teams, etc. What was that like? Have you ever seen Game of Thrones? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, it's, uh, it was very, you know, at least in some circles that I was a part of, I'd imagine. It was very, you know, you, you didn't really we know. Can, um, me and Obi yeah. started out as the same team. Now yeah. Obi's not playing. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, you know, you never knew. You had people with different alliances and people with 
different preferences and people, you know, had their own agendas and whatnot. There's a lot of drama Some people that you'd expect. Yeah. yeah, you'd expect that. And, you know, you just kind of had to, you know, you know, hope you come on top. You had a bunch of various, various people, sorry, from Game of Thrones and little fingers running around. And then you had people <laughs> that were poor old Ned Stark that got decapitated. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's <laughs> it's not without. I was I think it was easy to predict that there would be some of that, but I, I think ultimately people will rise above it and, and just try to enjoy the tournament. Um, and I think that being said, we're we're are we pretty close to starting, guys? It sounds like um, it looks like everybody's kind of assembling, and uh, we we're yeah. almost ready to go. Yeah, um, I'm going to make this announcement. I, so there have been some no-shows. I think we have, let's see, nine teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine teams. So we won't be able to do the four groups of three teams, which is fine. We kind of anticipate we'd have to you know, have an audible called at this point. So I'm going to probably, what we're going to do is we're going to reshuffle the teams, or the groups, sorry. And we're going to have two groups. Um, one of four teams, one of five teams, so one group will have an advantage, but it'll be shuffled at random. Um, and out of that, the top two teams will advance to the knockouts. So we're, we're going to have less people advance to the knockouts, but you know that's due to having some no-shows and having to change on the last minute. So I will announce um, the the, t the first matches and the, the new groups in game. And I'll also, I guess, I'll come in here and announce them as well. So let me just do that. Give me about five minutes. Um, let me do a last call for people checking in, just in case one of the no-shows is actually here, but hasn't PM'd me yet. So give me a second on that, and um, I'm going to just hop down a channel, just so I can concentrate real fast. All right. And we'll let well, Huge thanks. probably go back to his team, because... Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say thanks so much for, for joining us. Um, we're all really excited for this tournament, and uh, I think uh, maybe we can check in with you guys periodically, and, and after the tournament, certainly, and, and, and talk about some stuff. Um, so I want to say thanks again for doing this, uh, taking the time to interview with us. We in the broadcast team are going to take a very short break, so everybody go out and grab your favorite beverage and uh, snack and uh, get ready to watch some great matches. We'll see you back in about five or ten minutes. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Sean. I'll, I'll leave that up to you, babe. Um, I just <laughs> go to commercial break. Or? My... Go to commercial Brought break to you and uh, by uh, flaming yeah. hot Cheetos. <laughs> I turned the, the uh, microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, dude, that was Wayne for that. He just burned me. Are we? That's uh, cool. Are, are, are we taking like a five ten? Is this like off stream? Yeah. Are we, are we in secret? All right. I'll, are we I'm muted? Grab right? a drink then. Babe, are we <laughs> muted? Oh, okay, good. Because I was just about to launch into a really, really offensive tirade. So. <laughs> <This> <laughs> Tell me when we're stinks. muted. <laughs>